Hey everyone, this is Coach Conley from Conley Hoops. Today's video is the top five skills you need to make your varsity team right now. Being a high school coach for the past nine years and training kids all the way from junior high all the way through college, I wanna give kids the best opportunity to be able to chase and achieve that elusive goal of becoming a varsity basketball player. Check out today's video to help you on that journey. So I'm sitting here this weekend watching the NCAA tournament thinking about how great it would be to have that experience and uh, knowing a couple players that have been through it. Um, it's so awesome, but it's even great just to watch all these players compete at such a high level. And so today's video is all about, you know, how do you make your varsity team? What are the top five skills that stand out to help you achieve your goal? Because the first thing is to make the team, right? That's what you got to do. So if you want to make your team right now, these are the top five skills that you need to achieve that goal. The first and most important skill that you need to achieve your goals is learning to talk. Now that doesn't just mean trash talking your teammates, which at times can be a good way to get motivation, but we don't want to be a negative player. To get through tryouts, we need to show that we're the most communicative player out there. We need to be positive. We need to be inspiring. And today, a lot of the kids don't communicate at all. Uh, being a high school coach, it is the one thing that I wish more kids had experience communicating and talking and being positive. It is one of the first thing that college coaches talk about having to get out of their players when they make a college team. And high school is no different. I think we spend four years really trying to get guys to communicate more. And sometimes it doesn't happen at all. But every successful team has guys that communicate on and off the floor all the time. So you have to communicate on the floor. You got to be, hey, great shot. Hey, watch that screen. You got to be able to communicate in game and out of game. When you're on the sideline watching your teammates during practices or during, even during the tryout, you got to be clapping it up for your teammate. You got to be highly inspirational. You got to be like, hey, that's a great shot. Hey, great pass, man. That was awesome. Hey, watch the screen. Watch the screen. I guarantee if you're communicating a lot, you will stand out clear and, and far from everybody else. You can also ask questions of coaches. You know, hey, um, on this pick and roll, am I supposed to go over or under? What are we doing in this particular drill? You wanna make sure that the coaches know that you are trying to understand what they want in each particular thing. And, and the more you, you inspire positively with your teammates, let's say we're doing a shooting drill and you're like, hey, that's a great shot. Hey, great pass, man. Oh, my bad, I, I'll make the next one or even to their teammate, hey, you're gonna make that next shot, nice job, man. Whatever it is, if you can communicate to your teammates, to your coaches, and show how interested you are in the success of everyone else around you, that's gonna stand out and that's gonna make you a success, especially in that moment. Next thing is shooting. Shooting is usually my number one because that's what I am, a shooting coach. I believe the more you can shoot and, and more successful you are at putting the ball in the basket, the more coaches are gonna want you. I know I would take a guy that can shoot the ball over most guys that can just play defense because I know how important putting the ball in the basket is at the highest levels. You know, I mean, you can find and kind of scheme up defense a lot of the times, but a guy that can put the ball in the basket, you can find a use for almost all the time. There's gonna be a time in a game where guys aren't scoring, and if you can go to a guy on a bench that might just be able to hit a three, that's gonna be important. So again, you have to be able to make shots. You gotta be consistent and confident. You also have to be able to make your layups. A lot of things people don't think about shooting as being able to finish around the rim, but finishing your layups is shooting. You have to shoot 50 to 75% on your layups for or on any shots really, but on layups, you should be around 75 or 85%. You gotta be able to finish in traffic. You know, all of the ways to put the ball in the basket, coaches are gonna be looking at that and be like, man, he misses all his wide open shots or layups. You're not gonna take a chance on that guy. That's a lot to work through as you're building a team. You have to have a guy that's confident. Maybe he shoots the, can shoot the ball well, but he passes up open shots. You can't have guys that aren't confident and know that they should take open shots. You don't need extra passers. You need guys that can put the ball in the basket. You have to be one of those guys. If you're open, you shoot it and you make it. 
You don't want guys that don't know the difference between a good shot and a bad shot. Maybe they're a good shooter, but they sh always shoot with two people on them or they drive to the basket and try to shoot really tough layups. Those aren't good shooters. You want to know the guy that knows the difference and you want to take those guys and that's the way you're going to be successful at your trap. Hey, if you like this video, check out our seven habits to a varsity mindset ebook. It's downloadable. Check it out in the notes or on the link on the homepage. We really think it would help you establish a baseline of habits that you can use to build your varsity mindset. Hope you check it out. Number three, ball handling. Now again, you don't have to be Kyrie Irving handling the ball. You have to be able to show in drills against other people in one-on-one -on -one and five-on-five -five situations that you are confident with the ball and you don't lose control, right? You can't be dribbling down the court and then all of a sudden just lose the ball out of bounds. You can't be trying to set up a play and all of a sudden it just gets tapped away or you have to turn your back to protect the ball because you're not confident in staying squared up. That's really a clear sign that you don't have confidence with your dribble. And that's something you can work on every day, 20 to 30 minutes and get better at. So spend the time, even before you get to trials, really working on that. Other than control, you have to be able to beat somebody off the dribble. You don't need a bunch of fancy moves, but you need one or two moves that you're confident with and that you can use in a game or a situation or one-on-one -on -one that you for sure can beat someone. This game is all about breaking down the defense, beating one guy and creating two-on-one -on -one situations. If you can't do that with your dribble, you're gonna be very limited in what you can accomplish in a team setting. If a guy can take away your shooting ability, you're gonna to need to be able to put the ball on the floor and create an opportunity for either you to score or a teammate to score off the help. You can't turn the ball over. Even if your handles are really good, if you get crazy with the ball and you're not understanding that controlling the ball is more important than making some crazy move or really dynamic move, I know out there highlight reels are a plenty of people doing all kinds of great stuff. You don't need to do that to create offense for your team and your coach. They just wanna make sure that you can run plays, get to spots, and make sure to, you can do the things that they want you to do. So don't get crazy with your handlings. Don't turn the ball over and you will have success. Number four, conditioning. You have to be in shape. You can't go into tryouts, do the first drill, and be huffing and puffing, need a break. I've had kids have to come out and, and, and go throw up in the bathroom because they've never worked out that hard. Don't be that guy. Be a guy who's in shape. You've run miles a few times a week. You run sprints all the time. If you're the guy that's finishing first in all the sprints, cheering everybody on as they come in behind you, that guy's gonna stand out. Not only are you in shape, but you're also competitive. And so the more in shape you can be, do your defensive slides, be able to do shooting drills up and down the floor for 20 to 30 minutes. Remember, this game is all about running. We run for 32 minutes in a high school game. It goes back and forth and back and forth. There's no stopping. This isn't football where it's 20 seconds a pop. You are gonna have to run and play and run and play and run and play. Run and play defense, run and play offense. You have to constantly be on the move on both ends of the floor. And if you're not in shape to do that, you're not gonna have much success making your high school team. And lastly, you have to be competitive. You have to compete. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's line drills, if it's defensive slides, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, five on five, you have to have the confidence and show that you want to win. Winning by far will translate to you making the team. It doesn't matter if you got your game isn't as tight or smooth as other people. If you show you have a passion to learn and be competitive in every single situation, whether that's free throws, whether that's made shots, whether that's a defensive drill, whether that's a rebounding drill, remember this game is all about hustle and competitiveness. You might be the undersized guy. You might be the tall, slow guy. It doesn't matter. If you're willing to lay your body on the line, hustle after every loose ball, or try to win in every single possession that you have, you're going to be a player that your coach wants. So that's my top five, guys. If you can accomplish all of those things, you will have an opportunity to make your varsity team. Hey, hope you liked today's video. Hope it helps you succeed in making your high school team. If you did like our video, check out the next one and we'll see you next time.